from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Automotive industry body, the South African Tire Manufacturers Conference, hosted a launch event for its tire safety program in Pretoria in September. Cameron Mackay tells us more. The event involved the SATMC inviting stakeholders, including original equipment manufacturers, automotive dealers, members of government and national traffic police, as well as others, to discuss, demonstrate and emphasize the importance of tyre safety in preventing road accidents in South Africa. SATMC MD Induduzo Chala stressed that a lack of proper safety oversight and regulation, particularly in terms of tyre management, has contributed to high rates of vehicle crashes in South Africa. For this reason, he discussed the need for more urgent inspection, fixing and replacing of worn tyres, particularly tyres which have a tread wear indicator that is already level to the tread of the tyre. Chala stated road fatalities in South Africa in 2021 and 2022 were recorded as 12,541 and 12,436 respectively. Further, the costs of crashes came up to 188.3 billion rand in 2021 and 198.8 billion rand last year. It's costing the state billions of rands every year um, to, to pay out to manage these um, and I think you, you look at the cost, it can be actually going to something that is quite useful and why we needing to um, you know, work together in terms of trying to curb these things is because there's a lot of expenditure that I think goes wasted um, in terms of car crashes. It's a necessity because it's, it's there inherently. However, I think working together, those are the things that we need to, um, you know, counter. Human factors ca account for 85, greater than 85 percent. So that means that um, I think the choices we make, um, I mean, either drunken driving or I think the U-turns, uh, which you shouldn't be doing on, on the roads, those account for greater than 85%. And this one I always contend with, because again, I, I always put it in a manner to say, um, it's not necessarily to say the tyre is contributing greater than 70%, but it's the decisions that we make, and then that then result in a tyre contributing 70%, um, or greater than 70% of um, road crashes. So. If you don't inspect your tires when you, you enter a vehicle and you're driving on tires that are smooth or that have a treadway indicator that is already level to, to the treads, um, I mean, I think if you don't inspect that they've got cracks and you ensure that you're not buying tires from the side of the road, um, I think those are the decisions that we make and then we then see the contributing factor being greater than 70% because of tyres. And that's the mindset that we are trying and that we are working to change in terms of managing and having you know, safer roads and safer tyres um, for people to use. And already in 2023, we can see, we're already just, up, just below 2,500 um, fatalities on the road. The human factor has already increased and I think tyres is also still uh, ranked as one of the highest contributors. And I think th those are the situations that we are, are here to change. In terms of contributing factors to this lack of adequate tyre care, Chala listed factors such as poor waste tyre management, the trade of second-hand tyres, low disposable income for South Africans, poor infrastructure and a lack of regulatory enforcement. That cycle doesn't work properly in the sense that once your tyres have reach their useful life. It should be that um, there's a proper management of waste tires that they get collected properly and disposed of or recycled or processed properly. Now we are finding that there are leakages in the market and those tires end up indirectly uh, being sold to us as commuters or as consumers and I think there are pressures that people then opt for this option. So firstly that's the first one to say if we had a waste tire um, you know, collection service or management plan that is effective, we wouldn't be having as many challenges as we're seeing on the road. The second one, which is a major contributing factor, is, is the part one and the second and tires. In, in our country, I think we, we all understand, and especially my colleagues who are in, in the tire industry or the autos industry, um, understand that part one tires are unregulated. Um, we regulate, and, and I know um, the NRCS, Duncan, is going to look away 
uh, heavily regulated when it comes to new tyres um, that go on the road. However, second hand tyres are unregulated. So we've got a, an open market that is growing. Um, and when I say part one or second hand tyres, it's the side, it's the tyres on the side of the road. That market has gone uh, probably to two million tyres. I think that's the estimation that we have now, is that that tyre market is now growing. And one, it's competing with new tyres. And secondly, I think you cannot confirm the technical history of that tyre. No disposable income probably is, is what I should have started off with to say um, though that, that pressure of people not having enough money. So when you purchase a tie, it's never planned for. You never put away to say I'm putting a thousand rand this month, another thousand next month so that I can purchase a tire. You purchase a tire as a grudge purchase to say, oh darn it, I needed to, to buy a tire. Um, and then, or oh, this has happened, or something has happened in the vehicle, then you purchase a tire. So, the pressures of income are then making people to make the decisions of actually going to part one tires or finding other, or actually pushing tires. And I think what we will see also in the presentations is that people are doing the wrong repairs on tires because they're trying to push that mileage because of um, no income or having less income to be able to purchase new tires. Charla also stressed the need for more consistent regulation of the roadworthiness of tyres. This is owing to the fact that different provinces in South Africa interpret and enforce regulations, such as Section 213 of the National Road Traffic Act, differently. For this reason, the SATMC has proposed amendments to regulations that are more aligned to current market conditions. He also emphasized the poor state of road infrastructure in many parts of the country and that addressing this will also contribute to reducing vehicle accidents. The effect of today and the objective of today is for us to one align that we, we, we have, you know, as SATMC created a program on tire safety and I think we are proud to, to, to have partners who are coming to talk the same language as us, who have the same ambitions as us as the SATMC which is the road accident fund in trying to drive um, uh, tire safety on the roads and also bring that awareness but I'd also want to acknowledge um, that this event today or why we are structured um, in this way today was because of a full week of um, I think in the, in the autos and co particularly components um, space is that we, we, we had the Narkem show, we had the showcase of the mastery of, of, of the component industry and what they bring to the economy of South Africa and as value players, um, the SATMC as the tire manufacturers, we also had a role to play in terms of showcasing this. National Association of Automotive Component and Allied Manufacturers, or NARCAM, Executive Director Rene Mutalal at the event highlighted the role of NARCAM in seeking to positively impact the operating environment for component and tire producers in the local automotive manufacturing value chain. He noted that the SATMC has been a long-standing sister organization to NARCAM and that both organizations work together on a range of challenges in the local automotive manufacturing value chain. The issue of road safety and, and tire safety inextricably linked. Uh, and as we go into that heavy uh, December period, the more we kind of bring this messaging out, uh, I think uh, can only have the kind of impact that, that we want to see. So do, I think, congratulations to you and the SATMC for putting this all together. Thanks for agreeing to structure it the way we, we structure it and, and thanks for the close working cooperation. Road Accident Fund Senior Manager Sifa Mandla Gumbi highlighted that the RAF has contributed to raising awareness of the contribution to tyres to road safety as part of the SATMC's tyre safety program. In addition to the RAF's role in financially compensating people who have also been involved in road accidents, Gumbi pointed out that the organization has also been involved in a number of programs catered towards vehicle operators such as taxi, bus and truck drivers. These have included driver wellness and youth education programs. We also do defensive driving uh, programs that is done for taxi, bus and, driver, and, and truck drivers uh, particularly. We have also picked up that uh, after COVID, there was suddenly a huge increase in the number of um, accidents that involve 
uh, motorcyclists. And of course, because nowadays when you want to buy food, you just call and the guy comes and they are always in a rush because <coughs> there is deliveries that needs to be done. Unfortunately, um, there is a lot of accidents that are involved in delivering motorcyclists. So we've got a program that specifically uh, looks at delivering motorcycles, where so we're trying to teach them about the safety aspects. In as much as you are rushing, in as much as you want to make, make your next order, but there are safety issues, and we do see it in the states in terms of what we receive, because the number of claims for motorcyclists has suddenly uh, just shut up. Gumbi also pointed out that the RAF are participants of the National Road Safety Strategy, being driven by Transport Minister Sindesiwe Chukunga, of which the goal is to achieve a 50% reduction in road accidents by 2030. So this is not the beginning of the program. I think our colleagues from uh, traffic would, would know and would attest to the fact that we have been doing um, um, these workshops. So in terms of what we do, it's, I think Kit is going to talk to that mostly. But it's, it, it's a two-day workshop where day one, we have mostly traffic officers and some tra uh, of, uh, road safety officers where we just uh, take them through the technical makeup of the tire. Just so that people have got an appreciation of what a defected tire is and what contribution it can have to the safety of the vehicle. So that is basically, um, I think, where we get involved in the RAF. And we are excited about this program. Um, as, as, as it was indicated, we started working around 2018, 19. And up to so far, we have about 573 traffic officers who have participated in this program. And uh, from the reception we get, um, there's a lot of demand uh, everywhere you go. When are you bringing the, 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 the program? Oh, we heard that, that other province had the program. When is it coming to us and so on? So hopefully now that we are launching this partnership where um, it's going to be a structured program, we're going to be able to go to all the provinces and some provinces, Gauteng, Western Cape, KwaZulu Natal are going to be done. Um, in fact, we're going to have more than one session, which I think is, is quite good because ultimately, it, it, it's just to be able to, to, to help us have a broader understanding of the technical makeup of the tyre and then we can enforce it better and we can be able to also pass the knowledge to uh, users out there. On our side, we're also going to couple this program with um, um, other means of education to try and extend it further to the public using media and other platforms that we have access to. And I think hopefully in the next few years, we're going to have a better understanding and hopefully um, if, if this gets coupled with the improvements in terms of the laws of the country, I think uh, we indicated that there are people from DOT here, we've got people from uh, the Department of Trade and Industry and so on. I think if there is some amendments to the legislation, uh, we can be able to see changes over a long period of time that are going to only be positive uh, towards promoting safety because ultimately we want to be able to save lives. That's Kumo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.